we'll talk a bit about the specific project that I'm working on. Um, we'll cover some motivation behind why we're doing what we're doing with the Rust compiler in Cherry. And we'll also move on to uh, the details of the implementation. So what challenges we face and what changes now exist in LLVM and Rust um, to overcome these challenges. There'll be somewhat of a demo, which is actually just some screenshots of things that I did uh, yesterday. Um, and we'll finish off with discussion of what still needs to be done for this project. So what is Rust? Well, as many of you know, it's a programming language and one with a pretty big focus on safety, um, by which we usually mean memory safety. Um, so Rust guarantees safety using compile time restrictions, um, which makes use of compile time analysis. Um, one major component of this is the famous borrow checker, for example. And so if you want to sidestep this, um, this uh, compile time restrictions, then you have to explicitly annotate your code as unsafe. So in unsafe code, you can pretty much do anything you want with memory and pointers. So for safe code, however, um, the Rust compiler requires that lifetimes, bounds, and provenance of objects are analyzable at compile time for that com code to be considered safe. So what about Cherry? Well, Cherry stands for Capability Hardware Enhanced Risk Instructions. And it's best described as a set of hardware extensions or an instruction set extension, again, with a huge focus on safety. Um, so Cherry enforces safety at runtime in hardware um, using this concept of capabilities. So capabilities are essentially a replacement for pointers with the addition of some metadata that determines how that pointer can be used. Um, capability operations use this metadata to determine whether it's valid to perform that specific operation at runtime. It's worth mentioning at this point that Cherry has the concept of hybrid mode as well as pure cap mode, where in hybrid mode, um, capabilities have to be annotated as such, whereas in pure, pure cap mode, all pointers are capabilities. So for capability operations, um, the bounds and provenance are required to be valid um, for the operation to succeed at the point at which the operation takes place. So here's an example of a capability operation. Um, and this is taken from the Cherry RISC-V spec, but it's um, applicable to all Cherry-enabled architectures uh, because this is a load through a capability. So it performs exactly the same as a normal pointer load, except that um, at runtime, an exception can be raised if it's not valid to perform that load. So for example, if the validity tag is not set, that usually means that we have a capability without pro valid provenance. Um, or if the address of the capability is outside of the bounds that that capability is allowed to access, then we also have an invalid load. So what about the specific project that we're working on? Um, so this is something we're doing for our customer CyberHive. Um, so CyberHive make products for secure networking. Um, and the project that relates to this work is combining secure network protocols that are written in Rust um, with an implementation of Cherry called Morello. So Morello is an ARM platform um, with the addition of the Cherry hardware extensions that we just talked about. Um, Digital Security by Design is the source of funding for this project, um, and they also fund a variety of other projects um, that have the goal of advancing security with Cherry technology. So <clears throat> why do we want to combine Cherry and Rust? Well, essentially we want to get the compile time restrictions of Rust and combine them with the hardware runtime enforcement that's offered by Cherry. So that if we have constraints that can't be analyzed at compile time, but can only be enforced at runtime, then we can now guarantee that those constraints will be enforced. In other words, we want to make unsafe Rust code a little bit safer. Um, there's also discussion of a third subset, which is something like um, this code is safe when Cherry is used as a target. Um, my personal favorite motivation is a cute mascot. Anyway, moving on. Um, I have an example here that should show the kind of benefits that we're hoping to get with Rust and Cherry. 
Um, so I'll run through this code. And if you know Rust, you'll probably follow it pretty easily. Um, so what we're doing is declaring an array with four elements, taking a pointer to the beginning of that array, and then we read some user input and use that input as an index that we add on to the original pointer, which is then dereferenced. So without Cherry, um, if we end up with a pointer that points outside of the original allocation, then we just end up reading whatever happens to be in memory at that location. Um, however, with Cherry, that, uh, that read never takes place. Um, and instead, we get a hardware exception indicating that we've tried to read out of bounds. So given that we want these benefits, um, what challenges stand in our way in terms of the compiler? Well, the biggest challenge by far is the addition of these new pointer types in the form of capabilities. Um, and because we have additional metadata, that means that we end up in a situation where the type size and the size of the representable value for capabilities are different, um, which breaks a huge amount of assumptions in the compiler. We also know that we want to represent capabilities as pointers in different address spaces from normal pointers and with different type layouts. We also need to cover generation of Cherry-specific intrinsics and generating the correct LLVMIR for a Cherry system. Um, so this is an LLVM conference, so let's talk a bit about um, what changes are required in LLVM um, to overcome these challenges. So for our work in Rust to be successful, we need to Cherry support in LLVM. Um, and luckily, this work has been going on for many years. Um, it's a huge body of work with over 6,000 commits. And it covers the introduction of capabilities as pointers in address space 200. Um, the distinction of the type size from the size of the address that you can represent in pointers for capabilities. Um, and several Cherry backends with code generation for Cherry intrinsics. And a huge amount of work in making sure that transformations are Cherry aware and that code generation is correct for Cherry. So as an example of um, the kind of thing that the Cherry LLVM changes, um, I'm going to run through this pass called Cherry bound allocase. Now the problem that this is solving is that we need to set the bounds on capabilities that are generated from stack allocations um, by the use of an intrinsic or a cherry operation. Now we shouldn't really add an intrinsic until after SROA or mem to reg has run or optimizations in general um, because we would end up adding uses of stack allocations that would otherwise disappear. And we also want to avoid adding an intrinsic if we know at compile time that the bounds can't be escaped at runtime, um, because we want to avoid that extra operation if we don't need it. So the solution comes in the form of this cherry bound allocase code gen pass, um, which makes use of some analysis called cherry bounds. And there's a bit of code. I'm not sure whether you can read it very clearly, but this comes from the cherry bound allocase pass and the cherry bounds analysis. So on the left, um, what we're doing in the cherry bound allocase pass is determining whether or not we should use an intrinsic to set the bounds on a given stack allocation. So if we don't care about optimization, for example, then we can just insert an intrinsic on every stack allocation. But otherwise, we analyze the uses of the allocation. Um, and we called out, call out to the cherry bounds analysis on the right. Um, which goes through uses of stack allocations and for each use determines whether uh, we know at compile time whether the, um, the original allocation will be escaped. So as an example, the code that's covered in this slide, if we're using um, the allocation in, as part of a call, then we no longer know um, from that point onwards whether the allocation will be escaped at runtime. So how about Rust? Well, this is what we've been working on at Embercosm. Um, and I've made extensive changes um, in order to solve this problem of distinguishing the type size from the size of the representable value. Um, we can also now represent capabilities with their different address spaces and different pointer layouts. Um, and there's a, <coughs> a refactoring of the front end um, to always construct pointers with explicit address spaces um, rather than using the same address space for all pointers. 
So this will be especially useful for hybrid mode down the line. There's numerous small fixes to fix assumptions that just broke for Cherry. And of course, we've added some Cherry enabled targets, um, like some Morello platform targets, as well as a Cherry Risk V target. So again, I have an example of what kind of changes were needed. Um, now we're covering mem transmute in this example. So the problem here is that the user can request an unsafe transmute or um, conversion between a U size, um, essentially a size T, and a pointer type. So without Cherry, we just force this by loading a stored value as if it's the destination type. Um, however, with Cherry, this wouldn't work because we have mismatching size and layout, and there are also restrictions on treating non-capabilities as if they're capabilities. So the solution then is to construct the result using Cherry-specific operations. Um, and we have to make sure that this result isn't dereferenceable because we've um, just constructed it out of nowhere with no provenance. So again, here's the code that performs this. And what we're doing here is we're looking for the case where we're transmuting between a non-pointer and a pointer, um, which means we're generating an invalid pointer, so something with no provenance, but we need to set the address to the given value. And to do this, we introduce a null pointer um, and then use this builder method set pointer address to set the address of that pointer. So on Cherry, this builder method expands basically to a Cherry operation that will set the address of a capability but will not set the validity tag indicating that it's, it's not dereferenceable. Okay, so here's the demo, which is essentially um, a, a selection of screenshots from what happened when I first tried to run a binary that was compiled with this Cherry Rust compiler. So this is what happened. Um, so I get a security exception from Cherry um, which is actually not what I was expecting. Um, so I took a quick look as to where this was coming from. And we can see that it comes from um, some C libraries. And if you dig a little deeper, here's the source of um, the hardware exception, which is that we're storing to a capability C19. Um, and we're storing a 16-byte value at an offset of 32. But if we look into um, what bounds C19 actually covers, we can see that it covers a range of OX20, so 32 bytes. So we're trying to store off the end of a capability. And the, the thing that we're trying to store um, is actually this. So in C, here's the representation of um, the data structure that we're trying to store. Um, it consists of a union of function pointers and a couple of other uh, fields. So these function pointers, um, obviously the union will have the same size as one of the function pointers, um, but on Cherry, these function pointers will be, um, say, 16 bytes for an 8-byte pointer target. Um, however, on Rust, in Rust, um, the code that we are using to interface with this C code declares the data structure like this. Um, so the problem here is that we have the uh, sig handler type used instead of this union of function pointers. Um, and the real problem is that this actually resolves to a size t. So on non-cherry targets, this would have been fine. Um, however, for cherry, we've ended up with um, a pointer that doesn't cover the bounds that we're expecting in C. So while it's not a perfect demo, I think it demonstrates that um, cherry can help you identify code that's really unsafe um, and that needs fixing um, and also prevents you from doing things that you really shouldn't. So apart from fixing that specific issue, what still needs to be done? Um, so I'd like to add some explicit targets for hybrid mode. So at the moment, um, pure cap is the priority. Um, also need to get the Rust test suite building and running for Cherry enabled targets and to reduce the number of failures down to zero. There are many hacks that need to be removed um, and documentation needs to be written to allow people to actually build and run this compiler. Uh, some longer term goals is that I'd like to keep rebasing this work um, because eventually we'd like to get it upstreamed. Well, 
thank you for listening to my talk. Um, feel free to check out code on GitHub and ask me any questions. Thank you, Luz, for the talk. Uh, we now have time for questions. Um, yeah. Hi, uh, nice talk, first of all. And um, regarding the demo you gave, uh, yes. I was curious to see what would be the solution for uh, that C code to make it actually safe and compatible with Rust. Um, so the, the Rust code is, I guess, the problem. Um, uh, actually, the Rust code is the problem. Here. Yeah, so there's a little bit of funniness going on in the C code in which we're, we actually do want to treat these function pointers as if they are actual values. Um, so in C, we actually store um, a size t to a, a function pointer and treat it as if it's a size t when we read it back. Um, so that's, that's why the choice was made in Rust to represent that as a size t. Um, but actually, the Rust code, I think, needs, needs to be changed so that we have um, essentially the same layout as, as C, where what I'd like to do is have a union with a size t in there, and then the function pointer that we actually um, might want to use. Um, so then we'd end up with a structure that has the same type layout as it does in C. Uh, I'm not very familiar with Rust, to be honest, but uh, doesn't it support unions? Sorry? Uh, doesn't Rust support unions? Um, yes, yes, it does. Um, what it doesn't support at the moment is anonymous unions um, like this, so you wouldn't be able to get um, the same sort of representation as you would in C, mm -hmm. you would have to have another, another field in this type that you then have to go through to get to the union members. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you Hi. for the talk. I have maybe a naive question since you show interfaces with the C library. Um, how does code compiled for Cherry uh, interface with different libraries? Like, do you have to use a target-specific version of the C library? And how do you integrate all of that when you build the tool chain? Um, so this example is um, I'm building for Morello and specifically for a, an operating system, which is Cherry BSD, which is essentially FreeBSD with some Cherry modifications. Um, so that that those operating system libraries have been compiled for a Cherry system, and there's modifications within the libraries themselves, but also just the fact that they're compiled for the correct Cherry, um, in this case, PureCap uh, system, means that we can interface them with them. Um, from the Rust side, what you need to be able to do is, um, this is one of the hacks is, at the moment, you can't really specify a sys root very well. Um, so, I've had to hard code like when I'm compiling Rust and I want to link in to the Cherry libc, then I have to explicitly like hard code in a, a sys root to enable me to do that. Any further questions? Okay, if there are none for the moment, um, then we're ready for lunch break.